As the Senate prepares to battle this week over how best to combat the nation's growing opioid and heroin epidemic, the plot thickens as authorities in several states have called attention to a growing number of cases in which extremely powerful painkillers have been disguised as something less potent and subsequently sold on the street. So in this case, the drug that they're referring to is fentanyl. So fentanyl is used to basically treat um, chronic pain in end-stage cancer patients, and it happens to be 25 to 40 times as powerful as heroin. So the problem is, is that it is quite a bit easier to manufacture illicitly. So what drug dealers are doing is they're making this fentanyl, but then disguising them, disguising it as drugs that sell for, for more money on the street, such as Percocet, Oxycodone, Xanax, and what have you. So, But it's way more addicting. It's yeah, way worse. yeah, and much more powerful, like I said. So according to the DEA, fentanyl-related overdoses have killed more than 700 people between late 2013 and early 2015. So this is just adds another la layer of nonsense to the already crazy epidemic. Yeah, and, and it also speaks to the whole big pharma industry in this country. I mean, I'm not going to go there because that's a whole other discussion in itself. But I mean, just to give you guys an idea, this drug is a Schedule II drug. Mm -hmm. And then you have something like marijuana. That's a Schedule One drug. You'll actually get in more trouble for yeah. having, you know, like a joint on you than you would this. Absolutely. Meanwhile, this is killing hundreds of people. Weed is well, and it's interesting that you say that because even though, of course, 700 deaths over the course of basically a year and a half, almost two years, it's it's quite high. But it's really not much in comparison to the just general opioid and heroin epidemic, you know, the, the overdose deaths. So as a matter of fact, according to the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, they recently reported that there were 28,647 deaths as a result of prescription opioids and heroin in 2014. More than six in 10 overdose deaths were as a result of opioids that year. So this is something that I've been very interested in for a number of years because it's gotten completely out of control that, yeah, you can end up in prison for the rest of your life for having weed on you, but then you know, these kinds of drugs that are much more dangerous and, and, and addictive are, it's, you know, it's no big deal. Really okay, and it, it, obviously it does depend what state you're in because it varies, but sure. for the most part, you're right. I mean, that is the case. Sadly. Absolutely. Like outside of California or Colorado, <laughs> you know, watch. <laughs> but um, so the other thing about these lookalike drugs is they're even more dangerous because, so let's say if somebody's buying these drugs on the street, they might know what their their threshold is for something like Oxycontin or what have you, but they don't know if they're taking fentanyl. It's basically just asking for an overdose to happen, which is why this is such a problem. Unfortunately, um, the, the troubling fact is that users are not, are not always deterred by these scary figures because, so Ohio is one of the hardest hit states with, with this issue. They actually, in 2014, had 500, about 502 deaths as a result of this uh, fentanyl, fentanyl overdose. And according to Carol Rendon, who's the acting U.S. Attorney, attorney for the Northern District of Ohio, she claims, quote, when there is an overdose death, users do tend to flock to that drug dealer because they think that he or she must have incredibly potent drugs, either heroin or fentanyl or a combination thereof. Oh, man. I mean given you know the desperate situation of these people who are having to resort to spend their whatever money they have on these drugs that they're very very addicted to it's just mind blowing that somebody would see that see that somebody overdosed from getting drugs from certain people and then flocked them you'd think it'd be the opposite thing but we have to remember these people are very addicted and then they're in these terrible situations Absolutely. in the first place so we can't really judge them off that well and i mean and as i said at, at the beginning the the senate is they're going to battle over how best to combat this problem this week on the Senate floor. And of course, I, I mean, I'm happy to see that there might be potentially bipartisan bills proposed, but at the same time, I'm a little concerned that something is going to hold this up. And I think that this is such a big problem that I would like something to be done sooner rather than later. But we'll see how it plays out. We'll see what they have to say on the Senate floor this week. But in the meantime, let's keep in mind that fentanyl is the wolf in the already terrifying sheep's clothing that is Big Pharma.